Overly Sarcastic Productions and Red are continuing their journey today of one of the oldest stories ever, Dragon Ball Z, er, Journey to the West. And today we're gonna find out how many more current anime references this story involves. Welcome back friends and a special welcome, welcome to all the new friends out there. I'm Yo BGS and I cannot help myself. I need to know what happens in Journey to the West and I need Red to tell me how it's gonna go because right now we've got like Krillin who has basically met Goku and the two of them are going on an adventure on a magical horse. And it's interesting because like Journey to the West was written when people were innovating like works of fiction and mythology. It's not like today where people are just writing stories based on other stories that they've heard. So if you like these videos, if you want me to make more of them, please subscribe. I've got a lot of original stuff in the works. It's just taken really long because I also have to put these out too. Here we go. It is Journey to the West, part three. Last time on the Journey to the West, the virtuous monk Tripitaka set out on his journey to the Thunderclap Monastery where he was soon joined by the powerful but foolhardy Goku, I love, I, how can you not love this, like, the drawing there? Sun Wukong, though the Monkey King was originally too stuck. See, this is Aang, this is Krillin, this is, this character exists in every manga and anime. And reckless to be controlled, Kuan Yin saved Tripitaka from an early end to his story by inflicting a cursed restraining bolt on the uncontrollable Monkey King, forcing Wukong to finally put someone else's needs before his own. After defeating a monstrous river dragon who then joined their team, the trio soon found themselves faced with new perils, for the mountains are full of greedy and mur- Dude, and then I even forget, like, the river dragon reminds me of Ghibli in in some ways and the monkey king's impulsive nature is very much like joey wheeler the fact that he turned into a monkey like that's an entire subplot in Yu-Gi-Oh. there is demons and our heroes have a very the long way left to go here. so our heroes continue westward and arrive at the outskirts of a nearby village where by the way thunderclap monastery is also what i call my bathroom don't worry about it where wukong notices <laughs> an apparently unusual looking young man he immediately grabs the kid and starts in unhand me foul demon i'll slayeth with my bare hands not incur my wrath. Interrogating nice. him about the village, and although he's unsurprisingly rather reluctant to answer, the young man, whose name is Kao Tsai, eventually spills that something's actually amiss, and the village isn't quite so idyllic as it looks. See, a while back, a big ugly monster shapeshifted into a handsome dude and married a young woman. That's like... Hang on a second. I... That's like the pig character in Dragon Ball Z. There, um, Oolong. Oolong is a pig in DBZ that is also a shapeshifter. From Kao Tsai's extended family. Then after the marriage, he, uh let himself go a little, and his father-in-law, the patriarch of the family, objected rather strenuously to having such a hideous monster as a son-in-law, so he sent Kao Tsai out to find someone to exercise the demon, which has so far been unsuccessful. <laughs> now, of course, monkeys like, boy, are you in luck. I happen to be an expert at kicking demon ass. So they enter the village and mm -hmm. talk to the patriarch, who confirms that three years ago, the super- I've always been saying that, uh, Sun Wukong is basically Doom Guy. You in luck. I happen to be an expert at- If Doom Guy were eight times immortal, and had a spell of holding placed on it. Kicking demon ass. So they enter the village and talk to the patriarch, who confirms that three years ago, the super handsome dude showed up asking for his youngest daughter's hand in marriage. The patriarch agreed, but the handsome dude turned out to be an ugly shape-shifting pig demon instead. I Oolong, I'm telling you. By the way, this is also, because we're talking about things that are referenced nowadays, this is the original catfish. Like, you have to love it. I'd make an online dating joke, but I'm more surprised by the fact that with shapeshifting as ubiquitous as it is in this world, why doesn't this kind of thing happen more often? So anyway, even though the pig demon's a pretty hardworking guy, he's super ugly. Hi, Dad, just getting... That, dude, that is... I cannot get this out of my head now. So he better join the party. That's all I can think of. That's the other thing. This is... Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I just hit puberty. Um, But this is the original, like, party system, right? Hero goes on an adventure finds different characters who join his party and help him out on his quest. It's Wizard of Oz! ...and kind of possessive, and all the patriarch really wants is his daughter back, and for the pig dude to not be affiliated with him or his family anymore. So in this exciting episode, Sun Wukong gets to serve divorce papers. <laughs> Sun Wukong casually rescues the patriarch's daughter. Yeah, like that, it'd be hard for him. And then shapeshifts to look like her and lies in wait for the pig demon. Soon enough, the demon returns, and Wukong's like, Oh man, uh, darling, my parents are just being so rude about us. I hear they're getting someone to exercise you. Oh, no need to worry, sweet cheeks. There's no exorcist alive that can hurt me. I think they said his name was... Sun Wukong? Well, it's been fun, sweetheart, but I need to go disappear for a few. Oh, come on. It's even the DBZ music now. Come on. Sweetheart, but I need to go disappear for a few. 
Where are you going, darling? So they fight, and Wukong chases him back to his secret lair at Cloudy Path's cave, and along the way, he learns that the pig demon actually used to be a member of the Court of Heaven, who got sloppy drunk, hit on a woman way too many times, and got turned into a monster and kicked out of heaven as punishment. He so wait, so he actually was handsome. And not to mention, he's not the only one in this group that's gotten kicked out of heaven. Although, Wukong basically destroyed God. Want to know why they call me... The heavenly tumbleweed. Way too many times and got turned into a monster and kicked out of heaven as punishment. He would have been executed, but our boy the Gold Star of Venus intervened on his behalf. Not to be jaded, but that kind of seems like the only thing the Gold Star of Venus does. So then they fight and it's awesome, but then the pig demon calls a timeout and runs. I was super the So then they. You call that screwing up heaven lightweight? Well, we can't all have free passes for conscience free hijinks. That's fair. See, Wukong is the reason we can't have nice things, right? You wonder why there's a thing on the toaster that says do not bathe with? It's because somebody like Son Wukong came in and created all sorts of problems, and that's why they have to put a disclaimer Fight, in. and it's awesome, but then the pig demon calls a timeout and runs away. So Wukong also, was the demon fighting with a rake? The demon is fighting with a rake. They fight, and it's awesome, but then the pig demon calls a timeout and runs away. So Wukong returns to Tripitaka and fills him in and takes a moment to sass the patriarch cow for being a pretty bad father-in-law to his relatively <laughs> hard-working demon son-in-law. And then he zips back to fight the pig demon again. So they fight some more, and eventually Monkey asks why the pig demon's fighting him with a rake, and the demon's like, A rake? Ha! This is no ordinary rake. One blow from this and your very soul will be rent asunder. You were saying? I think I'd like to- Yeah. I mean, again, if he's eight, nine, ten times immortal- you can hit him in the head with a rake all year. It's not Sideshow Bob. His weakness is not rake. Thunder. <laughs> you were saying? I think I'd like to- That sound effect. Asunder. You were saying? I think I'd like to surrender now, please. So as it turns out, this rake-wielding pig demon is the very same rake-wielding pig demon that Quan Yin enlisted to help Tripitaka. So after Monkey learns this, he takes the pig, Shocker. whose name, as you may recall, is Pigsy, back to meet Tripitaka, who's- it's going to be great. We'll make it to the Thunderclap Mountain and everything will be amazing and you'll be able to go back to heaven. And meanwhile... Overjoyed to have another disciple to help. That, so that's what getting someone's... That's what getting someone's dander in a fluff means. Pigsy, back to meet Tripitaka, who's overjoyed to have another disciple to help him out. Everything is resolved shockingly quickly, and the patriarch cow throws a big fancy banquet for a newly expanded troop of heroes, and then our protagonists continue on their way. So shortly thereafter, they encounter a friendly Zen master known as the Crow's Nest Zen Master, who warns Tripitaka that, surprise, the journey will be absolutely packed with monsters and demons. But it's not like Tripitaka needs to be totally helpless. The Zen master teaches him a sutra. Whoa, okay, so this is... All right, nature of birth, not death, no being, no non-being, no defilement, no... That is why emptiness... Okay, so this is actually legitimate scripture here, not to be confused with what I thought last time, which was like, we didn't start the fire or something. B th again, this is also... Journey to the West is very much the um, R video game, the RPG trope of like, start with a basic quest and then by the end of it, you're literally killing God. Well, the Heart Sutra that'll hypothetically keep him safe from harm when he recites it. Then he casually insults Wukong and Pigsy, warns Tripitaka to keep an eye out for a water spirit in the near future, and zips back up to his nest. So our heroes continue westward when they abruptly encounter a tiger demon who introduces himself by ripping off his own skin. Ah! So they fight the- uh, Okay, so he's- This is the trope of starting the battle in, in your second form, not even- but if he ripped his skin off, all of his nerves would be exposed, so just dump, like, salt water on him. Demon for a little while, but finding himself outclassed, the tiger demon tosses his skin over a rock as a decoy and runs away, but not before grabbing Tripitaka. So the tiger demon takes Tripitaka to his lord, a cave demon, and they start debating how best to cook him. Meanwhile, Wukong and Pigsy figure out that the tiger demon escaped with Tripitaka, and Wukong immediately... How long were they fighting? In the book... <laughs> in the book, how long did they fight this thing before realizing that it's just a husk. They figure out that the tiger demon escaped with Tripitaka, and Wukong immediately charges off to find him. So they find the lair of the cave demon pretty quickly, and the cave demon sends out the tiger vanguard to fight Wukong. Yeah, you know how this part goes. Wukong kicks the tiger demon's ass, but this time, when the tiger demon runs away, Pigsy comes out of nowhere and kill steals like a boss. This is a very- Hell yeah, love that. You gotta do- the pig demon's gotta get his KD up, first of all. Second of all, again, for people who have read the book, is there ever any- Doubt in your mind when Wukong goes up against these side quest bosses that he's ever going to be in jeopardy. Because my thing, again, with the first couple animes I watched growing up, um, especially Trigun. Trigun, I never knew when things were going to go down. But like in Yu-Gi-Oh, sometimes you questioned if Yu-Gi-Oh was going to lose just because you never really knew where the story was going. In Dragon Ball, 
because death had no real object, like people died and come back all the time. I never knew if if Goku was going to die in a battle, but because Wukong is infinity times immortal, and these are just side bosses, like, is there ever any... Is he ever in any danger? Or can you basically just skip the battle chapter? The accurate representation of his overall characterization for the rest of the story. Anyway, Wukong flies back to the cave with the tiger demon's corpse and taunts ah. the cave demon until he comes out to fight. So they fight for a while and are actually pretty evenly matched, but when Wukong busts out his special attack and duplicates himself, the cave demon counters with his own BSOP special and whips up a veritable hurricane of wind that blasts Wukong with enough force to temporarily blind him, making it impossible for him to continue fighting. Wukong and Pigsy manage to escape and- I was relying on you to take that guy down. Out of all the people I don't- <laughs> Okay, so I guess maybe I'm a little bit wrong here, and it does look like Wukong's in some jeopardy. Busts out his special attack and duplicates himself, the cave demon counters with his own BSOP special and whips up a veritable hurricane of wind that blasts Wukong with enough force to temporarily blind him, making it impossible for him to continue fighting. Wukong and Pigsy manage to escape and try to figure out what to do next, and they find their way to a nearby cottage where a friendly old man and several young farmers let them stay the night. The old man also gives Wukong a healing balm for his eyes, and when he wakes up the next morning, he can conveniently see again. This is also when he learns that the cottage never existed. And a healing balm. I thought he said a healing balm. I thought she said a healing bomb, and I was like, that sounds splash potion of healing times a thousand. Conveniently see again. This is also when he learns that the cottage never existed, and that the old man and the farmers who took care of them were some of the heavenly spirits assigned to help Tripitaka on his pilgrimage. Okay, the rules for what these god dudes can and can't do are hella arbitrary. I'm starting to think they're just messing with them. So Wukong decides to try the stealth route for this particular mission, and turns into a mosquito to sneak into the cave demon's lair, whereupon he finds that Tripitaka is both still alive and rather grumpy at his delayed rescue. On his way Why?! Why did the fly get the um why did the fly get the alert from YouTube the or the the like Twitch dono sound effect and turns into a mosquito to sneak into the cave demon's lair whereupon he finds the Tripitaka is both still alive and rather grumpy at his delayed rescue on his way out he overhears that one of the cave demons Now I'm legit confused cuz that sound didn't play the second time Demon's minions ran into Pigsy, but obviously didn't see Wukong. So the cave demon speculates that either he managed to kill Wukong with his wind, or the Monkey King ran off to get help. But that'd be absurd, because there's only one person who can resist the cave demon's wind, and that's the Bodhisattva Ling Chi. So Wukong zips back to Pigsy, and with a little help from the disguised gold star of Venus, my god, that is all he does. They find their way uh. to the home of Ling Chi, where Wukong explains the situation. The Bodhisattva explains that he'd previously defeated the cave demon, but allowed him to remain in the mountain so long as he didn't hurt anyone. Seeing as this rule has been broken, Ling Chi grabs the flying dragon staff and prepares to unleash some righteous butt whooping. So they fly back to the mountain, Wukong busts down the door, and he goes a few rounds with the cave demon before the demon starts charging a special attack. I love that it's Wukong who breaks down the door, as if he's gonna do something, but like just kicking in the door and being like, my friend has got you, has got your number. But right number. before he unleashes it, Ling Chi throws the flying dragon staff at him, whereupon it turns into an actual dragon and punts the cave demon into a mountain so hard that he reverts back to his true form, which is apparently a mink. So Wukong and Pigsy nice. rescue Tripitaka, then get lunch and continue on their merry way. So soon enough, they reach a huge turbulent river, which would be bad enough on its own, but then a huge monster demon pops out of the river and makes the situation even worse. Wukong nopes out of there with Tripitaka in tow while Pigsy and the river spirit fight. Wukong stands guard for all of five minutes before the need to assert his badass status Shocker. takes hold and he dives into the battle. Shocker! That that is the least surprising thing I've heard in this video. Whereupon he immediately ends it by whacking the river spirit really hard. The spirit freaks out and dives back into the river, whereupon our heroes start planning their next move. They agree that, unfortunately, the river spirit is probably their best bet for getting Tripitaka across the river. But there's just one problem. Wukong actually sucks ass at fighting underwater. So it's up to Pigsy to go down there, lure the spirit up to the surface, and then let Wukong kick his ass on dry land. The plan works pretty well, except Wukong is, say it with me now, too impulsive. And the spirit dives Shocker. back into the river as soon as he sees the monkey king coming at him. They try again the next Next day, but this time the river spirit is wise to their tricks and refuses to take the bait at all. Wukong finally decides that the best thing to do in this situation is to go find Quan Yin, since she wouldn't have sent them on an impossible journey, so she has to have a plan. And unsurprisingly, she does. See, this- That's actually- I- again, I can appreciate that, because that- It's funny how even in, like, the very first story ever, people were smart enough to metagame. Right, for as impulsive and as, as out of his mind at times as Wukong can be, he's like, okay, this quest has to be completable. Again, it's that thing in video games where you're like, all right, this level has to be beatable or they wouldn't have put it in the game. So it's almost like thinking like a dev. 
But the question is, is the dev actually going to help? Journey, so she has to have a plan. And unsurprisingly, she does. See, this river spirit is, say it with me now, the same one she found on her way to Chang'an, and the first spirit she enlisted to help Tripitaka on his way. She sends Moksha back to Wukong, whereupon he calls the spirit up with the by name that Kuan Yin gave him, Wu Ching. So Wu Ching, aka Sandy, learns that the scripture pilgrim was right there the whole time, and if either of his disciples had bothered to mention anything about the scriptures, this whole debacle could have been avoided. <laughs> Once again... But you can't mention anything underwater! That's the hard part, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Good communication fails to save the day. So now all our protagonists are assembled. Tripitaka, the mortal divine monk at the heart of the story. Sun Wukong, the impulsive but insanely powerful muscle of the group. Pigsy, the gluttonous celestial soldier seeking forgiveness. Sandy, also a disgraced celestial warrior and the only party member who can swim. And the horse. Very bad party construction here, if we're thinking about it. Like, Tripitaka, obviously a monk. Uh, we got the fighter class over here. Pigsy, I don't know, would you, would you consider Pigsy to be a paladin? Maybe, or, or also, no, because he's got a two-handed weapon, so he's definitely not a monk. And then another character that is, uh, what would you call, like, a water, not even necessarily a thief. But I don't want to be lazy and say there's three fighters in the party. I guess the horse is a mage, but you need, you're going to need some magic to last any length of time in this game. Hey, you were in a river when they first found you. You clearly know how to swim. Why couldn't you fight Sandy? Or just take Tripitaka across the river in the first place? <laughs> don't give me that kind of back talk. <laughs> what do you even do? I don't care if you're an allegorical representation of the human will. You're a goddamn dragon. You have no business being this disappointing. Okay, so now that the story's been entirely set up and Dragons can do whatever they want, man. That's that's the best, that's the beauty of dragons. This being this disappointing. Okay, so now that the story's been entirely set up and our cast has been assembled, the journey to the west becomes very episodic. It's a real monster of the week kind of thing, with a new mountain and corresponding monster every couple chapters. Now, they're all good, and it. you should really just read the books, but for the sake of education and also pure fun, I'm going to be covering the more memorable, dramatic, or funny episodes in a series of shorter videos, with one to each episode, while skipping over the filler in the eight-chapter power-up sequences. So get ready for journey- Are there really eight- chapter power-up sequences and we thought dbz had filler to the west kind <laughs> yes i'm here for it i love it thanks for watching do to sentai even though that's the sentai warriors theme okay so uh now that we're three parts in we've finally set up the plot basically and it is worth noting, there's nothing wrong with Monster of the Week type stuff. I mean, that's why we watched Power Rangers growing up. That's why we did like 90% Transformers, X-Men. 90% of the shows we watched growing up were because you wanted to see the heroes kick the butts of the bad guys. And again, it's even interesting that that trope is now a part of this as well. Uh, the pig demon kind of has the Piccolo thing going, right? Where the Piccolo was world shakingly strong at first joins the party now is second fiddle to goku slash the main warrior son wukong in this one so i'm loving i'm loving the parallels here it's what makes this fun as just an anime as a literature as an rpg fan in general um hopefully you want me to to keep doing these let me know in the comments down below uh, i'm probably going to do them anyway so i'm just hoping that you are here for them again thanks for checking out the video take care as always and i will see you in the next one